Right, how are we doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today we are having another little look at some swings which have been sent into the channel. If you're interested in sending your swing, like I've started all these videos upon, then please feel free. Please, please, please send them into the social media links, which are hopefully coming up onto the screen now. If not, they're in the descriptive box below. Instagram, Twitter, ideally Facebook, whatever. Um, rather than trying to send them to my email because then they get lost and you know all the rest of it. First thing that I'd also like to say in all transparency is that I won't be able to respond to each individual so please forgive me I'm doing my best to help as many as I possibly can um, and essentially if you're interested in online lessons where I can guarantee that I can help you then obviously visit the website russellheritagegolf.com again it's in the description box below. We're having another little look at a golf swing which has come in um, it's an individual who basically is going to be looking for more distance, generally speaking, right? And obviously more key, that keyword consistency. And um, there's two things basically which are both um, very, very applicable. The, the, the first thing is that what we've been talking about on the channel um, over a period of time is in the backswing position. The idea is that you're basically trying to keep the pelvis downward facing and you're trying to turn it in towards a bent leg. When you do this, you'll feel an element of resistance that are created along the muscles in the top of the hip area, which basically has a counter opening towards your pelvis. So what I mean is if you fail in the right leg or you fail in the pelvis, so if I now turn into a leg which is still bent but horizontally, it doesn't create a resistance, right? So I can just unfortunately keep moving into a sliding leg. If I kind of straighten my leg too early and it goes outward facing, again, even if I keep the pelvis downward facing, you can see the way there's no resistance, I keep moving. Therefore, if I move the pelvis downward into a bent leg, you can see the way that as I turn into it, it has a counter effect onto me and it helps me open the pelvis. So the first piece of advice that I'd make sure that you guys are doing, and I see this uh, holistically across the board with people that come for lessons and people that do online lessons and all the rest of it, is that your backswing may look good, but the question is, is it functioning? And like what I talked about with the muscle activation in the backswing position, you should feel the muscles in the top of the glute kind of area and the top of the hip area becoming quite activated because you're going into a state of internal hip rotation, which basically means that the pelvis is at a greater rate of rotation than the upper part of your trail leg. Good, hopefully we get that. So the idea is that you need activation because actually it helps you open the pelvis in transition. Second to that, it's how you practice, right? It's like, you want more distance, people want more distance. Um, and then you go down to the range to practice to hit balls. But theoretically, what you need to be spending your time doing is learning how to swing quicker. Now, club um, speed, as we've been talking about, is all about the ability to create a wrist cock and a down cock. That is speed, right? What you can kind of hear here is basically the cocking and uncocking, if you like, of my lead wrist in relationship to my arm rotating in space. But it's a tremendously powerful thing. If you start to do this too early, you can kind of hopefully hear through the microphone that it's a slower hit, especially relative towards the low point where I want to be working at capacity. So therefore, the way that you swing faster is holding on to lag for longer. And the way that you hold on to lag for longer is by rotating because if I rotate you can see my shoulder starts to make its way back over towards my ankle line as opposed to if I cast and I start doing this you see my shoulder doesn't move. So what I would do is a similar to this and place your left ankle against the outer part of the wall, swing up obviously inducing a wrist cock and then try and rotate your shoulder in towards the wall whilst holding on to wrist cock. This would be a really beneficial exercise to kind of exaggerate the amount of upper rotation necessary. But without rotation, unfortunately, you will have to release. And one of the things that we're going to talk about transparently as well is one of the things that I've been researching in more detail recently is the kind of placebo effect and the effect that it has on an individual. So like I've been saying, you should do 10 minutes a day of a drill or of an exercise in the direction where you're trying to go but don't do the same drill every day for 10 minutes because basically it will have an effect where after a short period of time, it won't do anything anymore. It's just how the mind and how the brain works. So the idea is that you need a, if you're trying to make a swing change, you wanna be slightly chaotic in your approach towards it, where you don't wanna be doing the same thing all the time, otherwise you won't get any better. And therefore sometimes people get stumped for ideas, but it's like, again, not in a condescending anyway. way, it's like if you wanna swing it faster, then basically go in the garden and you know take the weight of the golf club out 
and swing quicker, right? It's like using the canes. It's like using the long sticks, which you can buy a piece of dowel from a hardware store. And I think I can just, maybe not, if I grip down on this slightly, but you know, start swinging an object of a severe amount of leverage in the garden as fast as you can. Right, and then what you'll find is that basically you'll start to learn how to move quicker because my final point reference to this individual who's trying to improve, it's like, when we get older, we lose plasticity, which basically means it becomes harder to learn new things. But we also have a different level of acceptance than we probably did when we were kids. You do need an element of a growth mindset to be able to progress, which basically means instead of every time you hit a good shot, especially in the process of making a change, you're like, oh, I want to do that again. You possibly need to ask yourself the question, oh, how would I hit it further than that one? Or how do I do better than that one? So for example, you would generally find that amongst greatness, there's probably not a huge amount of level of acceptance. The idea is that every day, these people that sportsmen, businessmen, whatever it might be, are generally trying to be better than they were the previous day. And therefore, you know, hence the growth mindset and, and hence the progression that they will always tend to see. I think that the day that you start waking up trying to do the same sort of thing all the time is the reality that you, you've probably got to conceive the idea that you, you probably won't change. But like I said, it's not that difficult, right? You start doing different things um, when you're practicing, try and hit the ball harder, try and work on the lag drills, work on the rotation drills. And what you'll find is it will obviously have a huge effect towards your game. The, the, the final point is that basically to be able to improve in golf, as we're going to explore over the upcoming weeks because we're going to start talking about exercises in the gym as well which would be good um is it could be anything right it's like eat better exercise a bit more you'll probably find your golf will improve on the basis of that due to the placebo effect of you feeling better towards it right so work hard experiment try not to do the same things when you're watching the channel and you see some of the drills, the whole point why they're on there is because you should be doing them. Because if you just keep going down to the range doing the same things, then the likelihood is that you're going to get to a stage where you're capped out. Um, like I said earlier, if you're interested in sending in the swings, obviously feel free to the social media links. Uh, please press the subscribe button. Um, I'll catch up with you soon.